rot. Ain't no rot. Gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive and glorify his holy name. Ain't no rot. Gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive and glorify his holy name. Everybody sing praise to his holy name. As long as I'm alive and glorify his holy name. Everybody sing praise to his holy name. As long as I'm alive and glorify his holy name. Ain't no bird gonna sing in my place. I lift my voice and glorify his holy name. Say there ain't no bird gonna sing in my place. My voice and glorify his holy name. Everybody sing praise to his holy name. Cause I'm alive and glorify his holy name. Everybody sing praise to his holy name. Cause I'm alive and glorify his holy name. Cause there ain't no tree. Gonna wave his branches. I lift my hands and glorify his holy name. Tree. Gonna wave its branches. I lift my hands and glorify his holy name. Everybody sing praise to his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. Everybody sing praise to his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I'll glorify his Welcome back to Wiggle Worship and Splash Worship this week. We are still talking about the fruits of the Spirit, and today we are going to talk about faithfulness. And we're going to talk about faithfulness in a couple ways. First of all, how we can be faithful to others and what that means, and then how we can be faithful to God and how God is faithful to us. So let's listen to a story. This comes from 1 Samuel in chapter 18, and this is the story of David and Jonathan, two friends that we can read about in our Bible. So David and Jonathan lived in the king's palace. Jonathan was the king's son. David played the harp for the king. David and Jonathan were friends, and Jonathan wanted to show his friend David how much he cared about him. So Jonathan gave David his own robe to wear. He also gave David his sword, his bow, and his belt. We will always be friends, said Jonathan. Yes, promised David, we will always be friends. King Saul became worried that more people liked David than liked him. So King Saul became very angry with David. David was afraid. Jonathan, said David, I think your father wants to hurt me. Oh no, said Jonathan, you've got to be wrong. My father knows that you are my best friend. But David was still afraid, so David and Jonathan came up with a plan. I'll go see my father, said Jonathan, while you hide. After I talk with him, I'll come back to you and let you know if you are safe. So Jonathan went to see his father. When Jonathan talked about his friend David, King Saul got angry. Jonathan knew that David was right. His father wanted to hurt his friend. Jonathan knew he had to tell David. Jonathan took his bow and arrow and went to the field where David was hiding. Jonathan shot an arrow out into the field and the arrow went far from where David was hiding. David knew that Jonathan was sending him a secret message. Because Jonathan shot the arrow far from where David was hiding, David knew he must run far from the king. Even though David had to run from the king, David and Jonathan kept their promise to one another. So this story is all about how David and Jonathan were friends, but Jonathan had to decide to help David, even though it, his, it went against his father, really. His father didn't like David and was scared that pe more people liked David than him. And so he was very angry. And so what Jonathan did was he tried to protect David at first. Um, and when he realized he couldn't, he knew he had to send a secret message to him and save his life and be a good friend. Now, we don't always have to make those kinds of decisions when we are being faithful friends, but what kind of decisions can we make? What are some ways in which we can be faithful friends to each other? So 
So I want you to turn to your family um, and who you're sitting with and think about and talk about how you can be faithful friends to somebody. Maybe it's sending them a note or, or drawing them a picture or making a phone call. Uh, maybe it's uh, playing with them. I know some of you play together right now in our virtual world. Um, and so maybe you can uh, play a game and have conversations and check in with each other to see how things are going. That's all being a faithful friend. Now, think about if you go on a field trip at school. Sometimes you are asked to be a buddy with somebody. And that buddy, what does that mean? Does that mean you ignore them all day? No, it means that when you go on a field trip, you make sure that you're connected with them, you know where they are, you are their protector, and they are your protector. And that's just what David and Jonathan were. They were buddies, right? So if something happens to your buddy on a field trip, you immediately tell someone and you make sure that they are taken care of. And that's what David and Jonathan were. And that's a way to be a faithful friend. Now, we are also called to be faithful to God, right? And, and to, to believe what God has us believe and, and wants us to believe and to believe in him and love him and be faithful to him, even when it is hard. And I know that right now it can be hard, um, but we are still faithful to God and we still know that uh, God is with us and uh, he loves us no matter what. And he keeps his promises to us. And there's a symbol that we use um, that we can remember to help remind us that God is faithful to us and keeps his promises. And you may remember it's a story from, from the Old Testament about Noah and there's a rainbow in the sky when God makes a promise. And so that's a, a beautiful picture for us to remember that even when there are storms and bad things that happen, there's a rainbow after. And uh, that rainbow is our symbol of God being faithful to us. So I encourage you for a craft this week is to make a rainbow. And you may already go out in your neighborhood and see rainbows around. And that's something that people are doing right now um, around our city and around our country are putting up rainbows um, in, in their windows. So when you go on a walk, you can kind of have a rainbow scavenger hunt to remind people that uh, we're faithful to each other and that there's still good that's going to be happening and God is faithful to us and keeps his promises to us. So make a rainbow, stick it in your window, put it in chalk on your driveway, um, uh, make it with um, yarn or pipe cleaners or, or construction paper, whatever you have at home, make, make a rainbow. And I encourage you to post that in your window um, and, and share that with your neighbors um, and share your love and, and God's love with others through your rainbow. Now, um, as you remember last week, we had fruit that um, every week we have fruits that um, symbolize the fruit of the Spirit. And we'll go through each one again. Uh, Kaylee made some pictures. So last week, it, uh, first of all, we have love. And remember, this is a strawberry and it, it may be backwards because this is in a different mode, but this is love for a strawberry. Remember, it looks like a heart. Joy is an orange slice, right? So it looks like a smile. Peace, do you remember what peace is? It's grapes, so we have purple grapes. It could be green grapes, but they're round like the, like the world, and so you hear peace on earth a lot. So peace. The next one is patience. Patience is a yellow fruit. It's a banana. Remember, when you try to eat a, a banana, if it's too green, it doesn't taste right and it's a little sour and hard, but you have to be patient for it to be exactly perfect. And so uh, uh, patience is symbolized with a banana. Kindness is a pear. Kindness is a pear because pear trees give lots and lots of fruit. So much fruit that a lot of times a family can't eat it by itself. So you can share with others. So this is just a reminder of, of uh, being kind to others and sharing. And then we have goodness. Goodness was an apple. Remember the, the phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but it keeps you healthy. And um, so it, it's a, it reminds us of, of goodness. Now finally today, this is kind of a fun fruit. Not everybody has ever seen this fruit before. It's called a star fruit. 
Um, and a star fruit can be yellow, um, green, but when you slice it, it looks exactly like a star. And I'll show you, see how it looks? This is what a star fruit looks like when you cut it. And they're they're pretty sweet. Um, this is the right season for star fruit. So maybe we can uh, uh, find some at the store right now. But one of the reasons why we chose a star fruit for faithfulness is because it reminds us of the star uh, when Jesus was born. And it reminds us of God keeping his promises to us and loving us so much that he sent us his son. And this star reminds us of God's faithfulness and our faithfulness to God. So I encourage you to take those rainbows, however you make them, and share them with others, whether it's on your windows or you can post it in our Children's Ministry Facebook page so we can see your cool rainbows and how you're sharing God's love with other people. So let's close in prayer and then we'll do our blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the fruits of the Spirit that you have given us and that you remind us of. And Lord, especially this week as we talk about faithfulness, thank you for being faithful to us and always loving and always keeping your promises. Lord, help us to remain faithful to you even when times are difficult. Um, help us uh, love you and remember all the things that you have done for us um, and turn to you um, during those times that we need help, Lord. Um, and Lord, we ask that uh, you are with all of the prayer requests that are in our hearts and in our minds. Um, and there may be some that we have shared with other people and those that we haven't shared with anyone. But you know what they are, Lord. And we lift those up to you today. Uh, Lord, we uh, ask that you help us be faithful friends this week and, and, uh, sh and continue to share God's love and share your love with others um, in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. And now for your blessing, you are a blessing. God made you special just the way you are. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Na 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 Saying, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so.